friends, it's Amy and I'm your sewing teacher and I'm here this week to talk about our lovely little pets. Now I know so many of you out there have dogs and cats, but I know some of you have rabbits and a hedgehog and I know that there's a few ferrets and there's some guinea pigs and there's lots of little critters out there that we all love. But over COVID, many of our little critters just haven't had the stimulation that they normally have. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a snuffle pad. You don't know what a snuffle pad is? Well, let me tell you about a snuffle pad. A snuffle pad works for any kind of domesticated animal. What that snuffle pad does is it allows your animal to be stimulated in a way that they normally don't. Domesticated animals have not always been domesticated. They've actually come from the wild and they have been domesticated for our loving homes. Now, before they were domesticated, our animals were foragers. They all had a very keen sense of smell and because of that, it's not completely been bred out of them and we are still supposed to provide them the opportunities to forage and to hunt. So some of the reasons that we would make or buy a snuffle pad is to give them a little bit of activity that they don't normally have. These activity pads help alleviate stress. They help stop chewing in puppies and they help make the animals alleviate some of their boredom. It provides a mental stimulation for them that they don't normally get. And it's something different than just walking. By initiating the sniffing and foraging centers of the brain, we provide pleasure for our animals. On my trip to the dollar store, I stopped and I thought, well, what can I really get that would help me make this snuffle pack? Now, if this is the kind of content that you would like, please give this a thumbs up. If you'd like to see other videos that would be, if you would like to see other content and videos created in order to make something for your animals, please put it in the comments below. If you don't have any suggestions for videos, please let me know what kind of pet you have in the comment. I would love that. And remember that every time you comment and every time you give me a thumbs up, that helps get me on the algorithm and lets more people see who I am and it gets them the information that I provide here on YouTube. This is what I found at the dollar store. Ozzy likes to move things about and is really rough with his toys. I thought, well, if I make a snuffle pad for him, he really needs something that isn't going to slide around on, on the floor. So I thought about a bath mat. I bought these little pot holders because the pot holders can be made into pockets and he can forage inside the pockets for some food. Um, and I bought this ultra soft uh, microfiber uh, fleece blanket and the reason why I'm going to use fleece for this activity today is because you don't have to hem the fleece. You could use this with um, scrap busting any kind of soft fabric if you wanted to get rid of what you have in your scrap stash but in order to do that you want to make sure that if it's a woven and it's going to fray that you use a serger or a zigzag stitch on the edges to make sure that it doesn't fray in your animals ingesting those threads. Very important that your animals are not ingesting those threads because it can wreak havoc on their in intestine. So once you have those items, you can really kind of mix this up. I did a search on, on Amazon and a search on um, Google and I found all sorts of snuffle pads and I'm going to kind of use some of the ideas for the activity centers from those pictures that I found. And I want to just do a quick test because this is just a cheap dollar store blanket. I did want to do a quick test to make sure that it won't fray. For a circular template, you could use a dinner plate. You can use anything that you happen to have on hand. Now I know that for one of the sections, I want to use 
a really large quarter of a circle. So I'm going to use this really big embroidery hoop and I'm gonna use the inside of this to mark up what I'd like to do. Now for this center, I am also gonna want to do two of the micro fleece, so the opposing contrasting color and texture. Maybe I'll do the other smaller circles first since I've got the circles out here. And so for this one, I'm just using the base of my elastic reel. And last but not least, I want to make a foraging grassy kind of area for the dogs. So I'm going to need a rectangle. And I'm gonna need that rectangle in both of the fabrics. So let's see if I can lay these both down. This one, this one is a scrap, so I'm really just <laughs> running with what I got here. So just so you know what I'm doing, I have a 70 centimeters or 27 and a half inches. I'm gonna do it to about 12 inches wide or 31 centimeters wide. Now I have to cut the, like I said, it's not a precise science. This is just kind of going with what you're feeling for your animal. Now this is going to be cut in half again. So I'm gonna take this in half again. So what I'm gonna do is I want each of my blades of, each of my blades of grass. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I want them to be about the size of my thumb, um, the thickness of my thumb. So again, it doesn't matter but I'm gonna leave about two inches from the end so that I have a place to sew it down. So that's a great place to start. I'm gonna make sure that these are, so you can see I have this really nice, um, about three inch, three inch solid piece and that's going to give me something to, so I'm gonna let the first one lay flat like this. And I'm gonna sew this first one right off the edge of the mat. And then I'm going to come and cut my other fluffy one. And this is gonna be a big cleanup with all this fluff. Okay, so we're gonna start with sewing this down. So I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna sew down the first layer. Then I'm going to get my second layer ready. And then I am going to sew down my second layer like this. So I'm just gonna give it about a quarter of an inch to an inch. And then I'm gonna sew that one down. I'm gonna pull out another one. The other thing you could do with these, instead of having them across in, in a line like this, I have seen them where they've been sewn down in a circle like this. And it all builds up bigger and bigger and bigger like a lion's mane. But if you're going to do it that way, you actually have to make your circles small, big, larger, larger, larger. I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine. I'm not gonna take you with me today um, because this is pretty simple and straightforward, but I'm gonna start with layering on my uh, grassy knoll and I'll be right back. So now I've got these all sewn on and I see that it's really gonna be excellent for me to hide in little kibbles for the dog and he'll be able to forage his little nose in here. In some of the spaces, I made them a larger 
um, distance apart so that I could hide more in there and some of them are nice and close together too so the kibble will be um, all up and in all of that area and you can see that that makes a little great little grassy knoll for him to forage his nose in there so that's the first activity now I forgot to mention to you that because I chose a non-stick back this is really tough to sew because it doesn't want to move with your feed dogs so if you choose something with a non-skid back because your dog is going to move it around or your animal is going to move it around, then I would definitely use a parchment paper on the back of this and just tear it off later. Otherwise, you will have a heck of a time trying to sew this on. Now, um, if you have smaller animals that aren't going to um, move this around too much, you don't need that non-stick part at the back and you can just use another piece of this blanket or you can buy yourself a placemat from the dollar store or you really can use um, a rag rug anything for your base um, and a rag rug would probably be really good if you had a larger dog um, and you could always apply a non-stick back to it after you've made it or created it you can buy material that has the non-stick bottoms like you would put on the bottom pair of a pair of footy kids pajamas or that you could put on the bottom of a slipper. I thought I had some in my stash and I couldn't find it so I must have sent it to school but that would also work really well as part of the back for this. But just remember if you purchase pre-purchase something with a, a non-stick back you have to use parchment paper or some kind of a paper on the back of it in order to sew otherwise it'll get stuck and your meal will be going up and down and it will be moving. So think about that. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna move on and we're gonna make our little areas uh, for other types of, score, of foraging. So first I'm gonna use my dollar store pot holders. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to take them and fold them in half like this. And then I'm going to place them on my mat like so. And I'm going to sew those on. So now I just have to figure out how do I want to do this? Do I want to do it? Oh, that might be nice. I could do it like this. So he still has other things to forage. So that might be good. Okay, I'm gonna leave those there. I'm just gonna put my pin bowl on there for a minute. I wanna plan the rest of this so I don't run out of space. part and the, it's these quartered pieces here now it's too much for my sewing machine to get through all of this so I'm going to sew this on by hand just using a needle and thread well friends this was my second snuggle pad that I've ever made um, the first one that I made was not with an anti-grip pad on the back I really thought I was going to be saving myself some trouble um, by starting with this pad so that Ozzy wouldn't be moving it around on the floor. Uh, he will enjoy this because it won't move around on the floor and he'll be able to really forage. But for me making this one, this was a little more difficult than the others because when I made the other one for Masha uh, about six months ago, I made it and I just attached it to a rag rug and it worked really, really well. I didn't have problems rolling it up and putting it through my machine. This one I really did have some trouble with um, because it was really difficult to roll. The non-slip part, um, when the stitches kind of got too close together, it split. Not really a good choice. Um, I probably should have tried that before I started the video today. But like I said, Ozzy will really like this one. Um, this one probably will not last as long as the last one. Um, so I'll just have to keep an eye. Now remember, every time you make something for your animal, you want to always keep an eye. Don't leave them alone with whatever it is that you've made because 
because we've made it ourselves, there is a chance that it might detach or something might actually um, end up with the choking hazard for the animal. So never leave the animal alone while they're working with a, something like a snuffle pad. Now, thank you so much for joining me today making the snuffle pad. I'm going to see if I can get Ozzy out here and show you exactly how this works and see if he'll um, have some fun with this today so I can show it on video. But hold on tight. Let's see what we can do. So I brought Masha to show you how it works. I wonder if I can turn it so she can show you. Ugh. Come here, honey. Here. There you go. Can you show people? If you've done a good job hiding the kibble, you can get the dogs to play for quite a while. people thanks for coming if this is the kind of content that you like you can give it us a thumbs up and you can give us a comment and say what kind of animal do you have a snuffle pad works really well for all sorts of animals i hope you found this informative if this is the kind of content that you like give us a thumbs up and a comment below and you can always subscribe and join us every sunday thanks for joining me on this journey it's sometimes my students it's sometimes my children is sometimes my sewing journey, but it's always your sewing journey. Thanks so very much. We'll see you next week. Say bye, Masha. Bye, people. Bye, everybody. Have a good week.